Well, hello there, my little goldies, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be a haul video. It's been a really, 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 really long time since I did one of those, but I wanted to show you some stuff that I've gotten over the last few months. I haven't done this before because um, it's been just really sporadic, and at one given time, I just didn't have enough to make it really worthwhile to put it into just a you know a two minute video so um, I decided to just kind of gather everything I've gotten um, and just kind of show you what I've I've got here so this is stuff that came since oh between I would say September and now although there's one thing that I actually got in May um, <clears throat> that I hadn't showed you guys. But um, anyway, it's a variety of different things. It's not all coloring related or anything. So it's a variety of different things that I've gotten. Um, and so I want to just kind of show everything to you guys. And so some of it's, like I said, there's one thing that's coloring related. Some of it's kind of crafty related and, and so forth. But a lot of it is different books that I've gotten. So anyway, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. So first of all, we have some fountain pens and I got these over the last few months. We got several of them. So this first one I'm going to show is, this one is called a Moon Man and it is a snowflake edition. I think it's a limited edition that they had out for the Christmas holidays this year. And this is just a, I got this on Amazon. Now for everything that I got, I will do my best to put Amazon links up there because most everything came from Amazon. Some of it didn't, but anyway, I'll link in the description what I can. So anyway, this fountain pen here is something that they had out this year and I got this thanks to my good buddy Gail. Gail made me get it, hashtag blame Gail. <laughs> but um, anyway, it came in this box and it's just a, it's just a little um, $21 fountain pen. It's, it's um, if you wanna try out a fountain pen, you could try something like this um, if you're not sure if you're gonna like it. But it's, it's pretty easy to do um it, it actually came like this and as you can see it came with a eyedropper as well and it's a uh, it's got um some little red lining in the box and then the eyedropper is red and the reason why it came with an eyedropper is because it does not have a converter or a piston or anything it's just a straight eyedropper meaning that you let me show you how this works and hopefully we won't get ink everywhere but meaning what you do is you just um you put the ink straight into the barrel, okay? And I've already got ink in it. It is filled with Pilot Irishizuku Konpeki, which is actually one of my favorite inks. But anyway, the ink just goes straight into the, the barrel and oh my goodness, and it gets a little messy and I got ink on my fingers. <laughs> I had, when I was filling it up last night, oh my gosh, like um, I had a bit of a mess. Um, these eyedroppers can get a little bit messy. <laughs> so as you can see, I look like a Smurf. Eh, one blue finger, one blue thumb. Yep, so anyway, um, I probably shouldn't have done that. But anyway, so the ink just goes right into the barrel, um, meaning it makes it really easy to fill and so forth. But yeah, um, don't take it off. <laughs> Do not take off your nib. Um, while it has ink in it because as you can see you will get ink on your fingers Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and show you how it writes um, This pen actually now my friend Gail got one not like this one, but she got a different color I think she got a rose gold one, but um, anyway, she said hers wrote really great right out of the box mine We had to tune up quite a bit because the nib on it was Horrible like it was really scratchy and now it is a fine nib so finer nibs will get will feel a little bit scratchy, like it's got some tooth to it, but this was really, really scratchy. So we had to tune that up quite a bit. But let me go ahead and show you how this writes. Now I got some Tomoe River paper, and it's just a, I got this old Hobonichi that I didn't fill up <laughs> a lot. Uh, I This was like a couple years ago, I got this Hobonichi, and I did not fill it completely. Um, I don't know, like I, I tend to like the bigger ones, and then I, I Basically, the long story of this Hobonichi is that um, for the last couple of years, I decided not to get one because um, sometimes I can't always keep up with it. And then I have a lot of empty pages and, 
These Hobonichis are not really the cheapest things in the world to get. So uh, I inst and for the journaling purposes that I like to use a Hobonichi for, um, I just got a blank Tomoe River paper notebook, and then um, that way uh, it's that way it's not predated, and I can um, do it as uh, I can do it as uh, as often or as little as I need to without feeling guilty about not using up all the pages. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and we're going to do a little bit of writing with this thing. I'll show you how this goes. Now, like I said, this is a tuned up nib. Um, we had to work on it quite a bit, but it's a fine nib. Now, again, pardon my head. It's the eyesight thing, so I have to get close to the paper so I can write. But let me just show you a little bit. So this is a Moon Man. And I'm not going to worry about like writing really neat or anything. Moon Man. Uh, snowflake. Snowflake edition. This is a F nib. I don't know why I made that in like that. Um, and I have Pilot. Eero. Shizuku. On Pecky. Okay, so you can see um, how that writes. And you might hear it in the video, but it's still a bit scratchy, but it's a lot better than it was. So I will say that for that pen. Okay, so the next one that I got, and I think it is in the other case. Let me go ahead and put this one away. But um, let me show you this again because it's got the little snowflakes on the outside. Oh, let me show you the nib on it. So here is what the nib looks like. And you guys saw me unscrew it. I'm not gonna do it again because I will repeat my Smurf performance. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, it's got the snowflakes on the outside and you can kind of see the ink sloshing around in it. It's the it's clear and then you can just kind of see where the ink um, sloshes around in it. Um, it doesn't have a clip or anything so it's a, it's a clipless pen and I'm just going to put it right in my case. Now I do have a couple of other pens. Let me see here. Um, I do have this Pelican. This is an M1005, M1005. This is, it's like an M1000, only they have it, the 1005, because this is a special edition. This is the, um, it's got some gray stripes on it, and this is called a Stressman, okay? And so we got these, oh my gosh, I want to say a couple months ago when, when they were released. So we ordered these directly from Germany. Um, so anyway, this is a Pelican. Now this, it, it was supposed to have a fine nib on it, but I don't think it writes fine. I think it's, I think they called this a medium or something, but it's, it's, uh, it writes pretty broad. So this is a Pelican M1000 Stressman. Okay. And I forgot what I have in it. But let me show you what this looks like. Now, this is a honkin' big nib. This is a heck of a honkin' big nib. <laughs> but it's got the really nice pelican nib on it. And here is what the gray stripes look like. Okay. And then you get the uh, fen fenial, fenial, I think, on the cap right there, the end of the cap. And then it is a, I believe it's an 18... It's either an 18 or 14 karat gold nib, I don't remember, but it is a gold nib, so it's really, 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 really nice. And it's got a little bit of spring to it. I wouldn't call it a flex nib, but it's got a little bit of a springy feel to it. Uh, but it it really writes like a dream. I really, really, really love these pens. Nothing writes like a pelican, I will tell you that right now. Nothing writes like a pelican. And then I got, uh, whoops, get my other case out here because I have the others in here. This is my other fountain pen case. <coughs> I got 
from our pen club, um, I picked up this little vintage Schaefer vac. This is a vacuumatic or a vac pen from Schaefer. It's a vintage pen. I don't know what year it was from or anything, but um, one of the guys at our fountain pen club picked this up um, at an estate sale and he restored it and sold it to me for a pretty decent price. And I'm not going to undo it because um, I got ink in it and if I undo the vac, we will definitely have a real mess. But here's what the nib on it looks like, okay? And so this is, a, this is definitely a finer nib. So this is a, I wonder if I have Compeki in that Stressman too. This is a Schaefer vac. This is a vintage one. And I don't know what kind of ink he had in here. I think he just put some Waterman ink in it. So Waterman. And I'm going to put a question mark because I just don't know. But <clears throat> it really writes like a dream. He really restored this very, very nicely. Really, really, really like this pen. And it's not really one that you would have maybe as a collector's item. I mean, it's vintage, so, but it's, it's, a, it's user grade. Like it's, a, it's definitely user grade. It's not pristine or brand new or anything. It's been around the block a few times. And like I said, he had to restore it because it wasn't working when he got it. And so he restored it and sold it to me. And then last, oops, last but not least, let me get this in my case. The clip on here is really stiff, but I'd rather have a stiff clip than one that's sprung because the sprung clips can be a pain in the, in the keister. Okay, so then I got last, but certainly, certainly not least, I got this Visconti fountain pen. This is a Visconti Opera Master. And this is a crystal edition. Now there are some that, um, it's the same kind of pen, but it's different editions. Like there was one that, that was crimson tied. I think there was a rose gold one. There was, there was other ones, but this one, um, and the ink is kind of sticking to the side of the, of the pen here. But as you can see, it is definitely a clear demonstrator type of pen. It's all clear right here. And it is it's got a vacuum mechanism in it to fill it and I'm not I'm I'll unscrew the back of it but I'm not going to I'm not going to move the vac or anything because we will get ink everywhere. So um, as you can see it's got the signature Visconti clip on it, okay? And then it's got kind of a I don't want to call it like it's not magnetized but it's got kind of a different kind of twist uh Thing for the cap so you just kind of twist it um, it will post but just be really careful so this is what they call I think the dream touch nib on the Visconti and this one I think is a medium nib so let me show you how this writes and I also got this pen at um, at our pen club and um, now this didn't come with the packaging or anything, um, so I got this for a really, really reasonable price. This is normally a very, 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 very pricey, expensive pen, but I got it for, or um, I got it for a decent price because um, the guy that I got it from, um, he got it in trade with with another person, and then it didn't come with the packaging or anything. So um, he just he's got some ink in it already. And so, like I said, because it didn't have the packaging and because it was gently used, um, I got it for a really, really good, good price. So this is a Visconti Opera Master Crystal. Now I will say if you post this pen, it's going to feel back heavy. So. A lot of people will not post this pen because it, it makes it just really heavy to hold. So the Crystal Edition. I normally love to post my pens, then you know that way I'm not going to worry about losing the cap. But it just feels really heavy posted, so um, it's not uh, it's not really a good pen to post. And the ink he had in here is Sailor Gentle blue and this is a really pretty blue ink it behaves itself very very nicely 
I do like this ink. I want to get some more of it. So this is what he had in this pen, and I did show you the nib and the clip and stuff. And so to put it back on, you just kind of push it a little bit, and then you and then you and then you twist it like you 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 push it and then you you twist it a little bit and then it locks in place it's got like a locking mechanism to to keep it in place and then you make sure that your vac thing your you make sure that the 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 knob that closes up the vac is screwed in all the way um then you're not then your ink isn't going to dry out so those are the fountain pens that i got got four really 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 nice fountain pens and um ranging in ranging in like you know quality price you know that kind of thing so i got i hit the spectrum pretty good like i got some um i had a lower end pen all the way up to uh a couple of them that were quite pricey actually so you know we hit the whole gamut there but anyway um those are the fountain pens i got let me go ahead and zoom back out and we'll show you the rest of our things here. Okay, so let me go ahead and zoom back out because we're gonna need a little bit more space to show you everything else. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now, as you guys know, um, if you have watched my color and chat or my, my latest, color and gap video that I put up way back when in September. <laughs> like I said, it's been a while. Um, you guys know that I've been doing keto since September. And by the way, I have lost 20 pounds so far. So I am super, super happy with myself. But um, anyway, if you saw my color and gap video, you probably saw this little thing here. This is a uh, testing, um, testing meter for, um, for ketones. And so this little machine, um, you put your testing strips in there. And then what you do is you take this little lancet and you poke your finger so you're drawing blood. And then you have two different types of strips. You have, you have one for your ketones. And then you've also got one for, you can also test your blood sugar with these ones, okay? So you poke your finger and you just, you decide like whichever strip you're going to use you can test for both if you want to and then um this will test like if you're in ketosis um if you want to learn more about keto there's all kinds of stuff on youtube about it you know so i'm not gonna get into the whole explanation but basically i'll kind of give you a little bit about it but basically what keto is is you're you're lowering your carbs to um like between 20 and 30 and below, like you're really, really limiting your carbs and then you're eating um, protein and healthy fat like butter and, and MCT oil, you know, that kind of stuff. And so you go into what's called ketosis, meaning that you're burning um, fat instead of um, glucose. And so this will test to, to see if you are in ketosis, meaning um, if you're producing ketones, which helps you burn fat instead of sugar. So um, this has been little, um, little, <laughs> this has been very, very helpful. I have used the crap out of this thing. <laughs> and um, I used to test like every day. Now I kind of do it maybe every other day, sometimes even just twice a week. Um, but this will tell you if you are in ketosis and producing ketones and if you're on the right track and so forth. So anyway, that is my little testing device. And if you want to see how it works, just go on to my last color and gab video. And because before I started doing the color and gab, I showed you guys how that works. So you can um, look on that and see how that works. So speaking of keto, and I'm going to try to keep the... I'm going to try to um, keep the different stuff organized in categories, I guess. Um, I showed you the fountain pens. Now we're on to keto stuff. Okay. And then, don't worry, I have other stuff. I have quite a few things. So, I did get two books. Now, when I was doing the research before I actually did the, before I actually decided to do the keto, um, I got this book. And it just talks about how keto works, and it's got some recipes in it. It is called, uh, it is called the complete. 
uh, it is called The Complete Ketogenic Diet for Beginners, and it is uh, your essential guide to living the keto lifestyle, and it's by Amy Ramos, okay? So, and it's got, like I said, it, it, it's got the explanation of keto, how it works. It's in like different sections. There's um, recipes like here in the back of it, all different kinds of recipes that you can do um, with pictures and, and things and it's got like different resources and stuff that you can look at. So if you're wanting to do a little bit of research and stuff about it, um, you can get this book or any kind of book like it. And uh, it's, it's got some pretty good stuff in it. I learned a lot by looking at that book. And then I got, uh, I got this book. This is called uh, Keto Meal Prep. And it's, a, it's by Flavosity, uh, Robert Parrish, and Desi Parrish. And it says on the front of it, let me, I'll show you the front in just a minute. But it says, let's see. Um, Where's that little tag here? It says 125 low carb recipes that actually taste good. Okay. And now I did not buy this book. This book was actually given to me by a friend of mine. Um, my friend Laura gave me this book. She is in our um, singing group, our choral group that I'm in. She's in there with me. And uh, so we're friends from there, but we're also keto buddies. <laughs> so what happened with her was she ended up ordering one of these and I think they had a massive sale or something and so she was able to get three of them for the price of like one or two of them so she kept one for herself and then she um gave another one to i think it was her son and then she had the third one which she gave to me so um let me show you i'm gonna raise the camera just a little bit so that we can get the the whole entire book in the in the frame just give me a second and I will raise it up. So anyway, this is a cookbook, okay? This is a keto cookbook. And um, let me just show you, and it, it's a nice hardcover book, okay? So I think this is by some people that have a YouTube channel, but let me just show you just some of these recipes and you can see what the it's supposed to look like. It gives you a picture plus the recipe and of course it's in sections. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in here that I want to try. Sometimes, like, when you think of keto, you're going, ugh, you know, because you're thinking, okay, vegetables that don't taste good. You can't have sugar. You can't have pasta. You can't have bread, you know. You can't have um, grains or anything like that. But um, you can have some really nice stuff on keto. So you just have to be a little creative. <laughs> but anyway, here's what some of it looks like. Okay. So there's, there's some things in here that I'm dying to try. So that is that cookbook. So keto related stuff, the two books, plus my little tester thing here. Okay, so now we're gonna get on to some crafty stuff. Some crafty things here. All right, so now going back to, um, it's kind of sort of fountain pen related, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, I get a couple of journals. And these journals were, um, again, from a guy in our fountain pen club. And these are made by a French company. And don't even ask me to pronounce it. I, I can't. <laughs> now, I don't think these are on Amazon. He ended up having a special order of these, I think. And these went over really well at... Um, Oh gosh, I think he took these to the St. Louis Fountain Pen Show. And these went over really, really well. So there's one here. And let me just, I'll show them to you the right way. Let's see. I hit them upside down. But here is what they both look like. And I'll show them to you one at a time because they're slightly different. Uh, but this one is called Floral, okay? So at least that part is in English. But you can kind of see what the covers look like and I think the company um, is in French or whatever but so it's a soft bound journal and I believe the size is A5 so the paper that is in this journal um, it's blank paper but they call it floral because it's got like you know floral designs kind of in the background of the pages okay and the paper is really 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 nice 
very, very fountain pen friendly. Um, you're not going to have any issues with bleed through with fountain pens. It's really, 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 really nice. So you have a bunch of paper like this, and then as you flip through it more, you have some more paper in a different style. This is more like craft paper, this, this type of paper. And this um, is more, it, it kind of feels like craft paper, but it's in grid style. So this over here was blank with the floral design in, in the background of the page. But this here is some grid style paper, okay? Some brown grid style paper. And then if you keep flipping more, you have some perforated blank, uh, kind of off whitish paper here. So this will perforate in half. Let me try to show you the perforation line right here. So the perforation line is right here. And so these pages will tear in half. So you can, you can take these out of the book and write like little notes and stuff on, on those. So there's what that one looks like. Okay. And then this next one is called, this one here I think was called botanical or something like that. Um, I forget. But anyway, so this one here has blank brown paper and it's got another kind of flower design in there. So it looks like little leaves and, and things like that. So um, again, the paper in it is really, really thick. It's not cardstock, but it's really nice. Wonderful, wonderful stuff for fountain pens. Okay. So you have a lot of this kind of paper. This is, like I said, brown with, um, it's blank. Blank paper with the design in the background of it. And this is brown. And then if you keep going, uh, you get some more of this. You get, okay, so you get some blank paper back here. This is just totally, totally blank paper. So you've actually got several different kinds of paper in these. So this is some blank paper with no design, okay? And then you have some more of this paper. Again, it's brown, but this is perforated. It's kind of like um, what we saw in the other book. This perforates halfway down the page and you can take this part out of the book. So this is all brown paper, but different, different kinds. So there's like the perforated ones and then you get the blank, totally blank. And then you get the one with the design in there. So those are the two journals. So I will be using probably one of these once I get done with my current journal. And I'll make another video where I show you my current journal and, and that. So these are going to be used, um, I'm hoping I will get to these like um, sometime this year or one of them this year. But the current journal I have is pretty thick so it's gonna be a while. So those are the journals, okay? Now, I got these crochet hooks and I'm going to go ahead and lower the camera again because I think the rest of the stuff I'm going to show we don't need it we don't need the camera so high up there we go so I got these crochet hooks and these came from Amazon and these are the common sizes that you're going to use to crochet with I think it goes like from let's see G-H-I-J um, I think these go from like B all the way up to K or something like that. But anyway, here's the, here's the, um, back of it. Here's the packaging. Oops. Move that. Okay. So there's the packaging. There's the back of that. And then here is what the hooks look like. Now these ones are, um, and again, I will link these on Amazon so you guys can, um, get these if you're interested but it, it opens up it's they come in a plastic thing and then here's the little card that talks about them okay and so these what's really nice about these is these have a little grip that you can hold on to and it's got like a kind of a plasticky sort of grip on these and what's really nice is um because if you're familiar with a, just a regular aluminum crochet hook, you know that they can get cold. And if you've got problems with your hands, um, you know that they can be a little hard to hold. So the grip on this is, um, it's a little bit squishy. It almost feels a little bit like rubber. It's not plastic, but it, it feels like rubber. So 
it makes it really nice to hold on to. Very, very comfortable in your hand. Um, now, I do have a set of clover hooks, um, and I've had I've had my clovers for oh my gosh, probably about ten years. And and I'll show you I'll show you what those look like. I'll show you what I mean by clover hooks. Um, and I wanted to see how these were going to stack up against the clovers because the clovers are quite expensive, but they are really, really great hooks. And I had them in this little case here to hold them. So these are my clover hooks. Let me go ahead and pull one out. So the clover hooks have the size on the grip right there. So how you would grip it is, okay, there's the size. It's a G, okay? So how you would grip it is, um, is like that. And these are really comfortable to hold, but these, again, like I said, are really pricey. And to get a whole set of these, you're probably gonna pay like, um, depending on where you get them, you're probably gonna pay anywhere from like um, 28 to 35 bucks. I think I even paid more 10 years ago for them. Um, I don't remember, but I believe that the set that I got did come in this case. So they all kind of came together. And I want to say, I want to say the whole thing cost me like 45 bucks. This was like 10 years ago, mind, okay? But um, so, but these are really nice to hold in your hand. And I wanted to see how these would stack up against the clovers. Now, um, I will say that, okay, watch. <laughs> My Apple Watch sometimes likes to go off when I don't want it to. Um, I will say that um, nothing really beats the clovers, but these are pretty good. Like these, if, if you can't afford the clovers or if you don't want to spend the money for the clovers, um, something like this would be really good. Um, these also feel nicely in the hand and you're not going to have, um, that cramping in your fingers like you would with a regular aluminum hook, like some people would. So I like these, you know, these are nice. Um, can't really complain. So... When I do a crochet and gab, we will probably use one of these hooks and see how they see how it works. Um, but yeah, so these have the really nice cushion grip on these to help with like arthritis and 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 um, hand issues if you if you have that. Okay, so that is that. All right, now. Another crafty item I got is this little kit here. And this is a, a beginner's guide to drop spindling. Okay, so what this is, um, this is for like if you wanna spin your own yarn. Um, now, obviously you can buy yarn in the store, but if you wanna do your own, like if you wanna make your own custom yarn, um, you can do that and if you don't have the money or if you don't want to spend the money to get a spinning wheel, you can get one of these little gizmos. And what this little gizmo is, this is a drop spindle. So the idea is that you put your fiber on the little hook and it twists and it makes your strand of yarn, okay? So it kind of twists this way and it grows, it grows and grows and grows. And then once you get your strand, then you kind of twist it around this thing, um, around the spindle here. And then you, you keep twisting, you know, you keep twisting. And they call it a drop spindle because you can kind of hold it. It's going to be hard to, to show like this, but you you hold it. And then if you get really good at it, you just you kind of let it go. And it just kind of spins toward the floor and it makes your your strand of yarn. OK, but I've messed with this a little bit. I will say that um, to do it this way, it's it's really tedious. OK, because it's it's slow it's slow and you're you're, you're not going to get it, it's going to take you a long time to spin what you need to spin on something like this but this is a really great thing to learn on if you want to um if you want to learn how to make your own yarn so anyway it came with a kit you get the drop spindle you get the little instruction sheet that tells you how to do it okay whoops you get a little you get a little paper with it with some more info on it. Um, and then here is the sheet, just a printed paper that tells you how it's supposed to work. Okay, and there's a front and back stapled instructions with pictures. 
And then also, I think there's some info that gives you a link to some videos that you can watch. There's a card here, okay. And then um, also what you get with it, and this is on Amazon. I did, get, I did get this on Amazon. Also what you get with it is you get some practice fiber, practice roving to, to mess with a little bit. So um, you, you don't want to crochet with this kind of a fiber. You you need to you need to make it into yarn first before you actually do anything with it uh, because it will come apart. But it kind of comes in like these little in this in this little I don't know how to explain it, but it kind of came in this little ball. Whoops! And I actually did take some off, but it it comes in this like little little ball that's kind of wound up and then I took some of it apart it will come apart very easily because it is it is it's some kind of wool I don't know what kind it is but it is some kind of wool and so the idea is that you kind of pull it apart and see it's it's got longer fibers in it but what you want to do is you want to try to the idea is to kind of draft it you know so it kind of goes on your and I'm doing this all wrong. I am really, really green at this kind of thing, you know? So mm, those of you that know how to spin, don't laugh at me. <laughs> but the idea is to kind of, they call it drafting, meaning that you kind of pull the fibers kind of apart a little bit and it makes it easier to, to twist and to spin consistently. Okay, but um, it is some kind of wool and they give you two hunks of it. This was the leader yarn that actually goes onto the spindle. Okay. They give you two hunks of it. There's like two different colors. So they do give you plenty to practice with, which is nice. This did come from Amazon. So I will link this in the description section. So if this is something that you would be interested in now, like I said, I think that doing it this way is really, really tedious, but it's a great first step to learning. Um, and an alternative if you can't or don't want to invest in an actual wheel. And it does come in this like Ziploc baggie. Okay. And so you can keep it all together. Okay. So this wasn't very expensive at all. I want to say it was under, I think this was under 30 bucks. Um, this was not very expensive at all. But like I said, it will be linked in the description section so you can check it out if it's something that you're interested in. So yeah, um, that is something I am interested in is, is learning to spin my own yarn. But, and I will say that I have a surprise coming. <laughs> my hubby actually, and, and I don't have it here yet. Um, it's not shipped out yet, but my, my hubby actually got me a, a a spinning wheel for Christmas. It's not here yet though, so it's gonna be kind of an after Christmas gift. But um, so I did, um, I did get a spinning wheel and as soon as it arrives, I will show you that. And I will, as soon as I kind of figure out what I'm doing with it, we'll do some stuff with that. Okay, so that is the crafty stuff. Okay, so moving onward. Now you probably saw, if you looked on my channel, um, you probably saw this book. I did a review of this coloring book. This is The, the Colorful World of Steampunk by Color It. And uh, so I did a flip through and review of this book. Um, Color It sent me this book for review. Again, I will link that in the description section so you can check that, that out if you want to. But um, go on to my channel and look at the video if you want to see an in-depth review of that, okay? So, now the next thing I got, now this is actually something that I won last May. Um, this is called Meathead, and it says uh, Meathead Goldwyn, okay? And it says, the science of great barbecuing and grilling, okay? So this is a book that I won. My husband and I are um, certified barbecue tasting judges. And so we go to um, 
barbecue competitions and, and we judge the barbecue that comes out. And so they always have a, a door prize thing at the, at the one that we go to mostly. And so I never win anything in my life, but I happened to win this book. And let me tell you, I was so excited. I was like screaming. I'm like, ah, you know, because I never win anything in my life ever, ever. But um, anyway, it is a thick book. It's a hardcover book. And it just talks about like the ins and outs of barbecuing and grilling. Um, it's a really, really, really nice book. There's what the inside of it looks like. And so it just, there's a lot of reading in here. Um, with, uh, and you do get some pictures that kind of demonstrate like the different meats, the different cuts of meat. Um, so there, there's a lot of reading here. So um, it's got really nice glossy pages. So it's a really, really in-depth book on um, barbecuing and, and what to do on the grill and so forth. But really, really, really super nice. And I think it is on Amazon. And so if it is, again, I will link that in the description section. Uh, okay, so here's some side dishes that you can have with it. So there are some recipes and stuff in here that you can um, that you can cook and, and look at and stuff, but oh my gosh, yummy, 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 yummy. So I was so, 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 so happy to win this book. Very nice book. And then the next, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I'm still, I'm still a little bit sick, you guys. Still kind of coughing up a little bit of junk from that chest cold I had. Okay, so. The next thing I got is um, another one of these illustrated Harry Potter books. You guys know that I am a huge Harry Potter fan. And so they put out an illustrated Harry Potter book every year. Um, this is the fourth one in the series. This is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <clears throat> now, I think this one got delayed because I think it was supposed to have been out last year in 2018. But um, it got delayed. It, um, I pre-ordered it. And... It got delayed. It said it was going to come out in February of 2019. Well, it never did. And then it didn't get released until like um, September or October of 2019 of this year. Um, so I finally got it, you know, when it was finally released. And so what I mean by illustrated is um, it has the whole story in it. Like it's it's the book of Goblet of Fire, but it has pictures in it. It's It's illustrated. So you can read Goblet of Fire if you know this way if you want to. It is a heavy book. It's a hardcover, very, very heavy book. Let me show you how thick it is, and then I'll show you some of the pages in it, but it's really thick. So it does have the story Goblet of Fire, as you can see, but it's it's also illustrated. And what's really nice about this is you get the uh, let's see, who's the illustrator? It was obviously written by J.K. Rowling, but I forget who the illustrator is. Il illustrated by Jim K. All right, I should have remembered that. So it's Jim K.'s interpretation of, of the scenery in the book, of what the characters look like, okay? So this is where, this is the book that um, Lord Voldemort was reanimated in. Um, he was given an actual working body in this book. <clears throat> there's what uh, there's what Harry looks like. Um, so Lord Voldemort, um, due to Wormtail and what he did to Harry, was able to get a working body again. Because as you guys know, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you know that... Um, in the in the series when he tried to kill kill Harry, it nearly destroyed him. But because he had his Horcruxes, it didn't destroy him completely. But um, he didn't have a working body, so um, it's got the. And I don't want to give the whole thing away, but it's got the graveyard scene in it. It's got what Cedric looks like, you know. So I did do flip throughs of the first three when I. Or no, did I do a flip through of Prisoner of Azkaban? I don't remember. But I know I did flip throughs of the first two. So if you guys are interested, I will go through. I'll make another video and I will do a flip through of this book if you want to see the book in its entirety. Okay. So here is the illustrated Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So 
eventually all seven books are going to be coming out and I do want to go ahead and get all seven books but we have to wait because it comes out once a year hopefully the others won't be delayed but at least this one did come out and um, I did get it okay so that's the Harry Potter book okay so the next thing I got is this set of DVDs this is a complete series of a TV show called emergency this was something that was on way back in the 70s and Honestly, I haven't seen the whole series in its entirety, but um, they would play reruns of it on TV, and so I would watch it when I could. And I don't remember a lot of the episodes. Some of it I remember, but I just, I remember that what I did see of it, I enjoyed the show. And unfortunately, they didn't have it in digital format. Usually I'll try to get it in digital format because the DVDs take up quite a bit of room. <laughs> but because they didn't have it, I got the DVDs instead. And I went ahead and got them because with DVDs, you just never know if they're going to go out of print or, or whatever, especially with an old TV show like this. But anyway, um, this was, uh, the show is about these two paramedics that, it, um, it's, it's fictional, obviously, but the characters, the main characters are these two paramedics that go around and, and, you know, they answer distress calls and stuff and, and take them to the hospital. And then the, the, um, there's another character that's a doctor and then a, a nurse and they kind of follow up with the cases and stuff and some of the cases you know obviously they kind of um, get to the heart and so they kind of become attached to some of the people you know that kind of thing but um, anyway like I said I enjoy shows like this and so I wanted to go ahead and get this set of DVDs and I've had it for a while and I'm kind of slowly making my way through the series and then this DVD is also Emergency. This is The Final Rescues. And I think this was uh, the final two movies or something. Like, I think the last of it was like one or two movies or something. And so uh, it's on this DVD. Now, one of the reviewers said that the movies that were on here were actually on the set. Um, I didn't know if that was the case for sure. So I went ahead and got this. And they had a pretty good... <clears throat> they had a pretty good uh, bargain price for them if you got them together. So I went ahead and did that. And then um, I did get another DVD. Now, um, <laughs> you're probably going to laugh at me, but I love um, Cabbage Patch Kids. And I have a few um, old Cabbage Patch Kids. And I can make another video and show you what I do have. I have some vintage ones that I scoured eBay for and picked them up. But I love Cabbage Patch Kids. And so they had this little Cabbage Patch Kid DVD, and this was more, obviously it's a kid's thing, but um, this was a, a set of, I think, stories or whatever that were made like in the 1990s with like Cabbage Patch Kid characters. And they were, um, I think, computer-generated ge computer characters and stuff. And I had seen this on YouTube a little bit, and I thought it was really cute. Like I said, um, you know, somebody that's a Cabbage Patch Kid fan would probably like this, and I love me my Cabbage Patch Kids, so I got it, and it's really cute. Like I said, it's more geared toward kids, but it's really cute. It's got some catchy little songs in it, and the characters kind of dance and sing, and, you know, there's, um, each segment has a, a story that it follows, and so it's, it's really cute. <coughs> and speaking of Cabbage Patch Kids, now this is the last two things that I got. Um, because I do have some old um, Cabbage Patch Kids, I got um, collector's guides. This was one from the 1980s, and this talked about the Coleco ones, and it also has a, a thing on the original soft sculpture ones, and you know how it kind of came into being, and it's got a section on the clothes, but it's it's got um, a little description of the different ones with um, like with what year and what collection it was in and it's got really nice glossy pages with a lot of pictures in it you can kind of see I'm not gonna flip through the whole thing but you can kind of see um, like uh, you know the different collections and and so forth but it's a collector's guide okay so if you collect um, Cabbage Patch Kids this is a nice resource because it kind of gives you an idea of like what to look for um, they had like different head molds, obviously different factories that they came from. Um, 
there's even a section on the birth certificates that you get with them and the clothes and the foreign ones even um, so I mean th it's a really nice resource to have if you like um, if you're a Cabbage Patch Kid fan okay and then they also made one for the 1990s I don't think I have any kids from the 1990s but <clears throat> I guess they were still pretty popular in the 90s so um, I went ahead and got the 1990 version and these are the ones that were made in the 1990s. This is when, this was like after Coleco went bankrupt and Mattel got them. And then like, I think it was Play Along Toys or Hasbro or something. And I think it was Hasbro, then Mattel, or it was vice versa. I don't remember, but it talked about um, all the 1990s versions of them. And again, it goes into sections and you get some descriptions as well as some uh, pretty good pictures of them. Okay. So again, it talks about, okay, here's, you get some close up of the different heads and faces and so forth and history and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So <coughs> on the back of both of the books, you get like a little blurb that, that talk about the book and, and about the collections and stuff like so. Okay. So that is my haul that I got. Um, both from Amazon and other places. Again, I will link everything I can in the description section. So feel free to check everything out that you're interested in. But I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. And like I said, when my spinning wheel comes in, I will show you guys what that looks like. I am so, so, so excited because I wanna start making my own yarn and I have to learn how to do it and stuff because I have no clue. <laughs> but um, the lady I got it from, um, Actually, you know, she doesn't ship it directly, but it comes from the company, but um, she's got a shop that you can order them from. And, um, <clears throat> but I talked to her over the phone today and, oh my gosh, what a nice person. And uh, her website is threeravens.net. I will link that in the description section so you can check her out. But um, she lives in the Baltimore, Maryland um, area and she offers um, spinning classes and, and stuff. And uh, there's things that you can get from her. But what a, what a sweet person. Her name is Christiane. And uh, oh my gosh, what a really nice person. Nice, nice, nice person. Um, but yeah, so when I get that, I will show you guys what that looks like. And we'll kind of tackle some stuff with that. Because um, I want to do, um, and again, um, I think I might have mentioned at the beginning of this video, but I'm not sure. Um, I want to do some different stuff on the channel. Um, and one of the things is, is when I kind of get the hang of doing this whole spinning thing, we'll do some spin and chat and, and stuff. And I want to do some more crochet and chats and uh, maybe we'll do some knitting on camera. Although my knitting skills aren't up to what my crochet skills are. So we will see, but, um, you're going to see some different stuff on the channel. Cause I like to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, I want to do a little bit more mixing it up a little bit because, um, I do have a lot of areas of interest and I do want to spotlight that. So anyway, that is what's going on. But I hope you guys enjoyed this pretty good sized haul of items that I've gotten over the last few months. And if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment and tell me what you think. Subscribe to this channel to see more like this. And hit the bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. You all have a great day and happy new year to you. And we'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, bye my little goldies.